Hi there, in this tutorial we're going to talk through one of the really tricky decision making question types which is called spatial equations and it's one of the logic reasoning sections. So we're going to go over a couple different methods. If you want to check out everything that we're going to cover in this video, check out the timestamps and you can see exactly what we're going to cover and when we're going to cover it. So we're going to be into a couple different things today and mainly we're going to learn two different methods for spatial equations. So we're going to learn the very, very awesome and simple method of substitution. And then don't get scared, but we are then going to approach some algebra. I'm going to make it nice and easy, but we're going to approach an algebraic method of approaching these questions as well. In order to put both of those into context, we'll go over worked examples showing both of those methods in play. So the first thing we've got to address is what actually is a spatial equation? Well, this is the type of thing that you will absolutely be familiar with if you've done decision making prep, which is the ones where you have equations set up and it's just a bunch of shapes. So square plus diamond equals circle. And there's no reason for that other than they represent something. They represent either a number or, you know, a logical term. You're then given a, a statement at the bottom saying, you know, star plus pentagon equals question mark. Now, this has nothing to do with looking at, for example, the number of sides or trying to find some sort of relation or pattern as you would in abstract reasoning. This is about logically, how do we manipulate these equations in order to give us our question mark term here? So it's a logic puzzle and not necessarily anything to do with what the shapes actually are. The shapes could be anything. We just care about them as being sort of separate terms in an equation. So the absolutely fabulous method that we're going to go over first is substitution. So this is when you notice similarities between the sort of the question statement and one of your equations that you've also been given and we can just plop one into the other and get the answer in one or two steps. And that is absolutely the methods that we want to do because we love some sort of quick step method. So we always preference doing a substitution method over an algebraic method. So we should always search for it first as it's much quicker. So here's an example of what our overall equations actually look like. So we've got a bunch of different statements set up and then we've got our question mark at the bottom. And our question itself is just going to be asking which of these shapes is represented by the question mark. So remember, the first thing that we're going to do is look for a substitution method. So if you want to give this one a go, pause the video now and have a while yourself. If not, we're going to go over it right now. So in order to approach it via some sort of substitution method, I fundamentally look at what terms are mentioned in my question mark term. And I've got diamond minus star. So I want to see if any of my other equations going on have anything to do with a diamond and a star. And actually we can see that my, my first equation does. It has a diamond and a star and it also has got a square thrown in there. So next I'm just going to see can I rearrange that first one in order to sort of fit in to my fourth one there. Actually, if I move that star, the diamond, sorry, keep the diamond steady, swap the star and the square over, that square is going to become positive on the other side, the star is going to become negative, that's going to then become diamond minus star equals square. So we're just going to plop that diamond minus star equals square into this side of the equation, and we actually just get square equals question mark, therefore meaning that our question mark must be a square. So the answer here is B. So you can see how easy and simple that method is if we manage to spot that substitution right at the beginning. Now, it's not always possible to actually get a substitution every single time. There are some cases where we will actually have to use an algebraic method. So we have to be careful of how we approach this. Now, in terms of the letters that you use to represent all the different terms, some people would prefer to use the letters of the shapes. If you do this, just be very careful that you don't have two Ts for triangle and trapezium and make sure that you note down on your whiteboard what each of your terms represent. Personally, I think the easier thing to do is use the answer option. So you saw in the last one, the answer option B was a square. So if I was to turn that into algebra, I would just label the square as B because then you've got a little legend on your screen that tells you exactly what each letter represents with half the amount of work for you. So this one is going to be one that we're not going to be able to do by simple substitution. So we're going to approach via algebra. 
So if you do want to have a go of this one on your own first, then please do pause the video now and give it a go. So with this one, as we said, we're going to want to just use the, the sort of the answer options that you have here. So A is star, B is diamond, etc, etc. All I'm going to do is go through each of the different statements that I have here and sort of write out on my whiteboard what they each represent in terms of algebra. So the first one I have is going to be 2C, because I've got two squares, equals B. Next one is going to be D equals B minus A. Next one is going to be C plus D equals A. And last one we've got here, I'm actually just going to, when I go, I'm going to rearrange this for my question mark, just to make it easier for myself. So I'm going to do question mark equals, and then I'm going to have diamond, which is B plus C, and then there's going to be minus A, because we're taking that star over to the other side. Lovely. So I'm now going to look for any sort of way that I can substitute this in in multiple steps. So I can immediately spot the similarities between B minus A, and I've got B minus A here. So I'm just going to plug those two in together and see what statement I get out. So substituting that B minus A for that D, we're going to have question mark equals, what are we going to have left there, D plus C. And actually, that matches with this statement here, D plus C there and there. So let's take that one and then we can substitute that as question mark is going to equal A. So in this case, our answer is going to be A triangle. So it's always important with these ones that you bear in mind exactly what sort of substitutions you're doing throughout and always just try and eliminate terms as you're going along. You'll find that logically it will all fall into place even if it seems very stressful to begin with. Now, here's a little go of a slightly trickier one. So again, if you do want to try this one, pause the video now and give it a go yourself. So the first thing that I look for is if there's some sort of substitution method. But immediately I've got my last, my last statement with my question mark in has three different terms in it. I, I don't see an immediate way that I can substitute. So I'm going to have to approach this via algebra. So if I sort of substitute in my letters as I go, again, just using the letters of the answer options. So my first statement is going to be 2A equals B. My next one is going to be C plus D equals 2B. My next one down is going to be D plus B equals A plus C, and I'll catch all there. Next one is going to be um, D plus, oh, here we go, so D, and we can actually get rid of that diamond from each side, can't we? So let's just remove that diamond from both, and our final statement is going to be D plus A equals question mark. So, Grant, I'm wanting to get away to have a statement with only D, A, and one other letter in it. So my current statement that has D plus A in it is going to be our third statement down there. So we've got D and A in that one, and we've got a B as well. So I can try and actually get rid of that B by combining this statement and this statement together. So if I can combine those together, I will actually get rid of that B fully, because I'll just substitute that B in as 2A. So that's going to be D plus 2A equals A plus C. Cancel out that A from both sides. We've got D plus A equals C, which actually matches up exactly to our final equation there. So you can see there's always going to be a logical way to go about it. So in this case, C is going to be the answer. So that's going to be the diamond we've got here. So always try and look for any way to eliminate terms as you're going through. That is the concept of algebraic equations and any time we're doing this just try and eliminate terms and get it as close to that final line the sort of the question statement as you can so substitution is a skill that it does require some level of familiarity on your part with the method itself and what the method um, sort of the basis of the method actually working so as you build up confidence over time try more and more to spot substitutions. So for example, in that second one that we did there, there was actually a substitution that I spotted, but it was a two-step substitution. So the easier way to do it if I was just starting out would be algebra. But the more and more I get comfortable, the more and more I can see how shapes are manipulated, the more substitutions you'll be able to spot quickly.
So algebraic approaches are used when your, your final term is a bit more complex and when overall the question is more complex. Now it is a more time consuming method, but it can help you sort of logically break down the data into steps rather than making leaps as, substitu as substitution does. So algebraic methods are used for the more complex questions and maybe when you're not confident enough to use a substitution method. So hopefully now you have an idea of how both to use a substitution method and use an algebraic approach to answer spatial equations. Now these ones require quite a lot of practice, so make sure to bash through a couple of um, practice questions after this to make sure that you understand the concepts that we covered there.